God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. So this morning, let us share together from the Bible and uh, think the Lord made some deposit in my spirit and I'm excited about it. And I can't wait to be here and to share this with us today. And it is, it is a simple and easy and known and common verse. And we talk about it or speak about it or say about it or say it almost every time that we're here. That we walk by faith and not by sight. Second Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 6 is sandwich this piece of scripture. As you look at the two verses between speaking eschatologically, in other words, talking about the last times and the last days, but between those two verses of scripture is sandwich this one piece. Which is also written the wall behind you. For we walk by faith and not by sight. And so I pick out a topic today that says walking blind. Walking blind. And I was talking to my mother yesterday and she said a parable to me. An African parable. That when a man stays long enough in darkness. He'll begin to see. Glory to God. I said, oh my God. So when you stay long in the dark, somehow you will begin to see. I said, oh my God, isn't that something? That blew my mind. And so walking, walking blind. Now think about it. Think about it. How, how, how easy, <laughs> how easy it is to walk blind. No, it's not. How easy it is to walk around with your eyes closed. And think about how many times you're going to stumble over. Even in your house that you're familiar with, you've lived there for so long. Now all of a sudden one day, and try it when you get home today, and close your eyes and try to go up the stairs and come back down, go to the bathroom and come back out. And you understand what it means to walk around blind. And so the scripture here says, we walk by faith and not by what? Sight. What is the opposite of sight? Is the lack of sight. What is the meaning of the lack of sight is blindness. So if the Lord told me that we walk by faith, and not by sight. So if I'm not walking by sight, it means I have no sight. And if I have no sight, then I'm walking blind. So I can substitute the word faith for the word blind. So I walk by blind and not by sight. <laughs> or I walk blind and not by sight. Now think about it, if I was a blind man and I couldn't see, but I, I have somebody that is dependable. Somebody that is reliable. Somebody that is trustworthy. That I can commit myself to. And even though I'm blind, and I know that that person will bring me to wherever I want to go, and he will lead me aright. And, and therefore, I, 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 will feel, I will feel a sense of comfort that even in the darkness of my life, there's somebody who is my light. And I walk with him, I trust him, I depend on him, I rely on him to bring me to every place that I want to go. And that level of dependence and understanding of reliability 
and trustworthiness of that one who has sight when I have no sight is how we walk. So this work that we are in is not, it's not our work that depended on our five senses. We got to move beyond how I see the world. My perception of the things around me. My sensory of everything that happens around me. And what I hear. And what I feel. And what I taste. I need to move beyond that. Because it is not about that. It is about who is my light. Jesus said, I am the light of this world. He is. And we reflect that light. And that's why he called us to as the light of the world. And if any man believes in him, he will not walk in darkness. That's what he said. If I believe in him, I will not walk in darkness. Because he is the son of righteousness. He brings light into every dark place. And so scripture is reminding us today that our walk is a walk of faith. And that means my eyes or my sight no longer functions when I rely on my faith. And I'm amazed by sailors who sail in the vast ocean in the thickest of the night. And now you just go to the beach someday in the night time and look at the vastness of the ocean. If you would ever see any landmark as you look at the vastness of the ocean. <laughs> but there are folks who get on that boat on their ship and they sail through that vastness of the ocean, even that darkness, and they still get to their destination. How? Because there's some instrument that they depend on. That even though they are, they are limited by their own sight, that there's something else that see for them. I don't know if you've flown in the darkness of the night, right there in the sky. And the pilot is still taking you to somewhere called your destination. Even though he cannot see. But there's some instrument that's reliable, that's dependable, that's trustworthy, that sees for him. So uh, as, long as, as long as you understand the concept of faith and of following God. When you find yourself in the valley of the shadow of death, you, you, you say, like David, I, I fear no evil. I, 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 I fear no evil because the Lord is with me. Now, on the flip side, brother, you take that plane up in the air without instrument and in the middle of the night, the thickness of the dark skies. Now, think about how it's going to look like. Or you take that ship in the in the vastness of the ocean, in the thickest of the night. Think about how it's going to feel like. So when, when, I have, when I have Jesus on my side, when, when, I, when I rely on him, it don't matter whether, whether it is night or day. doesn't matter. Because I know he got it all. And that is the work of faith. So I no longer depend on my side. I'm walking blind the more the more you become sensitive to the environment the less you become dependent on your faith you're sensitive to everything sensitive to what is happening right now oh yeah the, the, the storm is coming yes it is coming but i thank god i have the one who calmed the storm I see the pages of the scripture. If he did it before, he can do it again. And I dig in. I dig in. Glory to God. 
I know that when the storm is over, I will still be standing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's, that's my faith. Because now, now I'm, not, I'm not walking by my sight. I'm walking by my faith. I close my eyes. Glory to God. I'm walking blind. And now let, let's look at scriptures. Let's look at scripture. Uh, Second Corinthians, uh, now Second Corinthians chapter 5, from verse 6, he said, Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are yet at home in the body, we're absent from the Lord. Verse 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. In context, that is what it is. Verse 8, we're confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body than to be present with the Lord. So, but I say in the midst of this two verse of scripture that talks about the end time, we have this powerful word that says we walk by faith and not by sight. And I see a story of a man here. Luke chapter 7. Dr. Luke gives us an insight of what it means to walk blind or fly blind. And in verse, seven, in verse 4, it said, And when they came to Jesus, they besought him, say instantly, He was worthy for whom he should do this. He's talking about the centurion. For he loved our nation. They're talking about him now. Now the story is this. Centurion's servant was ill at home. And he called the elders because he could not approach Jesus by himself. But Jesus was approachable. But he couldn't. He needed a mediator. He needed a mediator. And we have a mediator in heaven. And we talk about this many times. Christ the Lord. Mediating between you and God. And so they sent to the elders of the Jewish people a mediator. And they came to Jesus, the elders, and said, We want you to do these great things for the centurion man. It was a Roman general. And, and the reason we want you to do it, he loves our nation. And, and the, the reason we know that he loves our nation, because he built for us a synagogue. <laughs> he built for us a synagogue. The kind work of this man he didn't know that later on in his life, he would need it. He would need it. His kindness to the Jewish people opened the door for him now that he was in need. And sometimes there are some good that you do years down the road. He opens the door for you. That's why the Bible says we should not be weary in what we're doing. For in due season you will rip if you faint not. That's what scripture says. And, and so this, he, he loved our nation for he has built us a synagogue. And then the word continues. And Jesus went with them. And when he was not, now not far from the house, Christ went with them. Them mean the elders who came to him. And ask of him a favor for a man who had been kind to their nation. Who had built them a synagogue in the midst of oppression. And Jesus went with them. And when Jesus was now not far from the house where the man lived. The centurion, the Bible say, sent friends unto jesus saying unto him lord and, and that's significant right there the man recognized jesus as the master of everything lord is translated from the word adonai in the greek new testament it will mean master or owner owner of everything Lord, order of everything. Trouble not thyself. Don't trouble yourself. You don't have to go through this journey to come to my house. And this seemed to be a stack different from what we're talking about the last time. We're talking about Lazarus and his sisters who said, Lord, had you been here, my brother would not have died. <laughs> But here we see the reverse. 
A man who had not much contact with Christ but heard about him and what he could do. He was walking blind. Not by sight now. He didn't say, well, asked if you were here, it would, my brother would not have died. No, no. It didn't matter if Christ was there or not. Jesus could do miracles regardless of where he's at geographically. Because he's omnipresence. God can do miracles here in America as much as he can do in Europe. Simultaneously. You, you know how, how awesome it is that God is not having a line and say, well, I'm going to answer your prayer first. Next, next. No, no, no. He answered your prayer simultaneously across the globe. If, 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 seven, if seven billion people will have to be in line, think about how far you will be in that line. And how long it's going to take for God to reach you and give you your daily bread. So Jesus is more than, well, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. So th this, is, this is a sharp contrast from that. Jesus is going to this man's house upon invitation. And then he sends his friends to him and said, I want to fly blind. I want to walk blind. I want to sail blind. Because I, I, he might have read in scripture that we walk by faith, not by sight. Uh, therefore, I, I don't need him to be in my house for miracles to happen. Don't need him to be there. Yes, I, 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 I invited him to heal my servant. But I think the Jewish people misunderstood what I said. I need him to heal I don't need him to come. Because I know he can heal whatever he's at. I choose to walk blind. I have not seen him, nor seen his miracles, nor seen what he has done. But I have sure heard that he can do some. <laughs> Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We'll find out how Jesus responded to this man's attitude and how he understood the concept of faith or the concept of walking blind without sight. And, and, and now, Christ was told, trouble not yourself. Don't have to come. He said, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter into or come under my roof. I'm not worthy that you will come under my roof, Lord. But I know you can sure do something about my request. How many of you sitting here today who walk by sight? Or you fly by sight? Or you sail by sight? Like Thomas the Demas. If I, if I don't see it, I don't believe it. You know, the world tells you seeing is believing. But that's not the scripture. Don't have it said, Blessed are they who has not seen, but yet believed. Blessed are that. That's what Christ said. So th this walk of faith is a walk of walking blind. Don't see, but I believe it. Don't see, but I believe it. Lord, I, I trust you. Lord, I rely on you. Lord, I depend on you. I know you're gonna walk it out. May not feel right right now, but God, I know whatever is wrong, you're going to make it right. If everyone may be, may be collapsing under whatever pressure they are in, but I choose to stand solid with God. Regardless of the circumstances. That, that's, that's a man or woman who understand this concept of working with God. And, and, and in verse 7, he said, wherefore, neither thought myself worthy to come to thee. But, this is what he said. 
but say in a word and my servant shall be healed what it said release a word release a word release a word that's what it said release a word and my servant will be healed speak lord release your logos and i can sure work with that with my faith and process that to be a rima that will heal my servant this man is working in some powerful revelation here folks he said he said say in a word drop a word in my spirit <laughs> drop a word say Look at that. It says, say, somebody just fascinated by the King James Version of the translators. Say in a word. Uh, I said, uh, uh, like, like the man had a bucket. A bucket of words. Everybody's saying this in there. Everybody's speaking their own, speaking in there. Oh, this man is never going to be here. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not, you're, oh, this your servant is going to die. We, no. And, and Jesus said, and the man said, I have this bucket of words. But I want you to put yours in it. <laughs> Glory to God. Drop yours in it. <laughs> My God. Uh, you know, back in the day when we were young, you, 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 got, you have this water that, that's dirty. And there's some type of chemical. You just put it on in that thing. All the dirt will congeal. The water becomes clear. And, and that's what's happening here. That's a picture. Right? You got this dirty, this dirty bowl full of all kind of words, negative words. And the man said, whatever you are, Jesus, just, just drop in your word. And, and Jesus speaks the word, gets in the bowl, and every other word congeals. And the bowl is clear. Release your logos. And I can process that by faith into a rema word. A reveal word that changes everything. You, you and I can hear all this word. You can hear it as long as you want to hear. But until it mixes with faith in your heart. I mean mixes with faith in your own heart. Not, not, not somebody else. In your own heart. It's never going to be activated. Never going to be activated. You, you, you can have two different pieces of things, chemicals, right? Until you bring them together by themselves, they can stand alone with no power. Now, try to bring them together. When you mix it together, then you start to feel the heat of the kinetic energy that used to be a potential energy in them by themselves. Bam! Something happens. The word of God am I speaking to you this morning? If you can just receive it. And it mixes with faith in your heart. And that's why sometimes you just get a revelation of the word of God. Say praise God. I never heard that before. Yes you did. You heard it before. It just didn't mix with faith in your spirit. Light just came on. Now after it mixed with faith in your spirit. And so the man said to Jesus. He said, say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. And then he explains why. He explains why. Why he chose to walk blind, not like the rest of them who wanted Jesus physically right there. Want him physically. You know some folk, if they, if they call pastor, uh, can I... Can you pray with me, Pastor? He says, yeah, sure, I can pray with you. Let's pray over the phone. No, 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 no. I want you to come. I want you to come. I want you to come to see me. Why? Because they don't believe that the same pastor who's praying over the phone is the same pastor who's going to come to their house and lay hand on them. They don't believe that. They don't believe there's no difference. So you, 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 have, to, you have to see it you all have to feel him to believe him. 
But that's not bad in and itself. It's just that God is still working on you. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> because there will be time when he's in California. And you need prayer. If he cannot just come to your house, then you got to depend on your flying instrument. You're going to walk blind. And when he prays over the phone, you'll believe that that prayer that he prayed over the phone is the same prayer that he would have prayed if he was physically there. Now, this man was working in that. Christ, he said, you, you, you don't have to come. Just put in that word. And my servant will be healed. And in verse 8, he said, for I also am a man. I was looking at a word also. It's from the Greek word kai, which means end. It's a conjunction word. So he, he's, not, he's not trying to compare himself with Jesus Christ. Because there is no comparison between him and Christ. No! But he, he's just using double, double negative, double positive. You've heard that before. I and am a man under authority. I have authority in having soldiers under me. He said, when I say to one, go, he'll go. When I say to the other, come, he come. And to my servant, do this, and he do it. And when Jesus, verse 9, when Jesus heard these things, he marveled. What was it in, in, in modern times? You say you were flabbergasted. <laughs> when, when, Jesus, when Jesus heard these words from this man, he was flabbergasted. Now, Christ is on his way. We hear the disciple told everybody, let's go. This man is a good man. He built a synagogue for the people. The elders had asked that we go do him a favor. Let us go. All the disciples get ready. We're going to see this general. We're going to see him. We all have not seen him before. We're going to see him shake hands with him. And everybody's happy. Going to him. Jesus is coming with his trail. And then in the middle of the journey, when he was close by, some folks came. Hey, I got a word from you. A message from my master. No need to come. He said, just say a word. Put in a word. The slave, the servant will be healed. He said to tell you, here's a man under authority. When he said to one, go, they go. Said to the other, come, they come. Said to the other, do it, they do it. He said, just say something. The man will be healed. And Jesus looking at this whole thing. Oh, wow. That's, and today you were like, wow. I have never seen anybody with this kind of faith. In other words, in that time, everybody is walking with their eyes open and with their sight still working. But somebody in the midst of it decided to walk blind. And would not rely on his sight. And that amazed Jesus. It shows that that is exactly where God wants me and you to operate in. To wake up in the morning and say, Jesus, I know I can't see. I don't see you, but I believe that you are with me. And I, I'm going to do my daily work now, Lord. I know your presence is with me. You're going to bring me back. I'm not afraid of nothing. And even though you cannot physically touch him, you can spiritually feel him and you're working blind. I know he's there. Folk may tell you, well, you're going crazy. Where's Jesus? I can't say, I know that he is with me. I can feel his mighty presence. Glory to God. And so Christ said, he marveled. 
He's never seen something like this. And he turned him about and said to the people. <laughs> now Jesus, Jesus starts revival here. Starts revival here. Started teaching right here. He turned around and said to the people that follow him, I say unto you, I have found, I have not found such great faith. No, not in Israel. The man's attitude amazed Jesus so much that he started a teaching with what had just occurred. Stopped everybody. You know, Christ was not offended. Said, so, well, we were going over there. He wasted so much of our time. We, we, we changed our schedule just to fit him into our schedule. And because the, the, the elders asked us to do this, we had all the things we wanted. No, Jesus was not upset. He was rather marveled by what he's just seen or heard that a man would say to him Christ you don't have to come you don't have to physically be there I just know that in the beginning was the word the word was with God the word was God the same was in the beginning with God and that word became flesh and that word dwelt among men i know that you are the creative ability of god when god said let there be light you went to work and there was light i know you are creator of everything you can fix anything you don't have to be physically here for it to happen just put in a word and my servant will be healed i choose to rely on you because you are reliable i choose to depend on you because you are dependable i choose to trust in you because you're trustworthy and you have proven it over and over again that you are the christ the son of the living god i don't have to have you in my house i walk by faith and not by sight because that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You speak the word, Jesus. And I know my servant will be healed. And so Christ was not offended by him stopping the journey to his house. But he made a sermon out of it. Come on, everybody. I have never seen such faith, not in Israel never seen it this man is a roman citizen but yet believe more than you all who are sons and daughters of abraham because that's where where that man is that's where i want you all to be because some of you follow me here because you have seen the miracle you've seen the bread you've seen the multiplication of the fishes you ate my food that's why you're following me but I wish you'd be like that man. That's what Jesus is saying to them. I wish you'd be like that man. And, 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 and the Bible says, and in verse 10, and why he was speaking this, why he was speaking, and they that were sent, listen to this verse 10, they that were sent returning to the house, what happened? Found the servant home, that had been sick. <laughs> Found they, glory to God. Now, the Bible is so rich, ladies and gentlemen, so rich. Now, there's a conversation going on here. The man, the man said, "Christ, don't have to come. Just speak the word. Everything is going to be all right." And Jesus stopped. Yeah, follow this Bible. And, and Jesus stopped. Marvel turned around, said to the people, I have not seen such faith. No, not in Israel. And then the folk who came, and they were going back home, and somebody ran to them and said the man was here. 
the man was healed. Now, from all of the scripture, did you, did you feel that Christ was startled, anxious? No, of course not. Did you see, did you read over there that the Jesus stopped everybody and said, well, the man said I should send a word and I'm going to send it now. Ladies and gentlemen, you are just hanging there. Over here, Peter, over here, John. we're going to release the word. Now, wait, wait. one, two, three, we're re we release the word. No. Did you see anything like that? No. Because the man's faith has made his servant whole. The man's faith has made his servant whole. You know, each time, or most time, that Jesus healed the sick, you know what he said to them, brother? Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. That's what he said. So he already received that miracle by walking blind. So Christ didn't need to say nothing. By releasing that faith word, he activated the power of God that flew to his servant and healed him. So Jesus didn't need to do nothing. There's, there's no, no place there that he stopped and said, well, the man asked me to speak. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to speak now. And it's going to happen. Just watch. Watch is going to happen. Not that Jesus doesn't speak at some time. Yeah, he does. Lazarus, come forth. He did. Go show yourself to the high priest for the leopards. Yes. Put, put mud in somebody's eye. Go wash your, your face and, and you will see. And Christ would speak. But this was so, so much of, of an awesome moment in his ministry. That somebody already received before he even received. Why? Because he chose to walk blind. Not by sight now. Don't, don't, don't want to rely on my sight now. I want to release my faith. And when he did, his servant was whole. And before, before those folk who came to Christ, and now mind you, he was close to the house. The, 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 he was close to the house. Bible says he was now not far from the house when this occurred. So he, he probably was, was just some few minutes away from that house when all of this was happening. So this is not like, oh, Jesus, Jesus was a, a, a thousand miles away. And so, and, and so the miracle had to go through some process. No, it was instantaneous. When the man releases his faith, on behalf, on behalf of the servant. And no, the servant was dying, really dying, almost dying. He was, he was almost dead when this was happening. So he couldn't speak for himself or know what was happening around him. And the master stepped in in the, the same way that in our sin, and iniquity, we were cut off from God, dying. And then the master stepped in and said, God, I will stand on the behalf of this folk. I will intercede for them. I'll pay the price for them. And they will behold again. And that's exactly what's happening here. His master jumped in the midst and said, no, you're not going to die. I will stand on your behalf. And he appealed to the master. Heal my servant. Heal my servant. Same thing Christ is doing today. He is interceding and advocating for you and for me. He doesn't need it. But he is doing it for you. He is doing it for you. And now what are you going to do about it? Accept him as your Lord and personal Savior if you have not. In other words, be born again of the warden of the blood. If you have not, 
and healing will come. Spiritual healing, physical healing, financial healing, every kind of healing will come into your life. But you got to be ready to walk blind. <laughs> like I said at the beginning, this is not mine. It's my mama told me that if a man stay long enough in darkness, he'll begin to see. So if you hang in there, you say, no, I'm not quitting. Man, the first day may not make sense. The second day may not make sense. But I choose to hang in there with him. And by the time you know it, you get used to walking with him and talking with him. You don't even know where you're going. But he's leading you. Because he's reliable, dependable, and trustworthy. Hallelujah. Lift up your hand. Just bless him right now. Tell him, Lord, I, I, I'm willing. I'm willing to walk with you. And I'm willing to walk without sight. Glory to God. I want to be at that point in my life. That the things around me don't control me no more. No don't control me no more. Glory to God. I will not let these things. Paul calls them light afflictions. I will not let them distract me. From the power and the presence of God. In the name of Jesus. Like the centurion. Lord drop in a word. In my bucket of faithlessness. Drop in a word. In my bucket of sickness. Drop in a word in my bucket of hopelessness. Drop in a word in my bucket of backslidden. Lord, I know when you drop in that word, it will distill my water. Righteousness and holiness will come forth. Healing and health will come forth in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you glory this morning. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your word. Lord, I pray for each and every one of us today. For the grace, God, to follow you until the end. In the name of Jesus. Whether we walk in the darkness or walk in the light, doesn't matter. But God, we choose to trust in you. Whether day or night. We choose to trust in you. In good times or in bad times, we choose to trust in you. Lord, we thank you this morning. We give you glory. You have proven over and over again that you are able to do a sitting abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. And to you belong the glory and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord Almighty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. God bless you. If you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401 954 6188 or visit our website at www.kingstabernacle.org You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for services beginning at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. and for Wednesday Bible studies at 7 p.m. We are located at 500 Greenville Avenue in Johnston, Rhode Island. Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations.